Hello and welcome back to Tinker Talks Guns. So I've been contemplating an optic for my AR-15 for some time. And looking around and doing some research, I figured that an LPVO would be just about perfect for my AR-15. These are typically one to six power variable optics with an illuminated reticle. And they're reasonably compact and not excessively heavy. Um, but it just seemed like the proper sort of thing for my AR-15. And um, I expressed this on social media and a friend of mine, Roy, offered to loan me this. This is an Arkin EP-8. They retail for about $500. It has an illuminated reticle. It's one to eight power, 28 millimeter objective, 21 ounces weight total, takes a standard CR2032 battery. And it's a first focal plane sight. And it seemed kind of the sort of thing I'm looking for in terms of its feature set. And it has the very typical features for an LPVO. You've got the illuminated adjustment here, your turrets here. These do have covers, I just don't have them on it at the moment. Um, and it seems like a very solid sight. Optical clarity is very good. Uh, the reticle illuminates well enough that it's pretty visible even in full daylight. And uh, it's the sort of thing I want for an AR-15. This is an Aero Precision X15 16 inch carbine. And it's a solid, basic, middle of the range AR15. And it works very well indeed. I mean, it's really, I have no complaints. It's never malfunctioned on me. It's reasonably accurate for what it is, probably about a 3 MOA rifle. But this is not meant to be a precision rifle. This is a multi-purpose weapon suitable for CQB, like I'm ever going to do that. And uh, as a casual competition rifle or a perfectly serviceable home defense weapon. You can't hunt big game with a 223 in this state. Uh, the minimum diameter for hunting big game is six millimeters. It's a five, five, six. So it's not really a hunting weapon. You could use it for small game, but frankly, I have better options for small game. So for me, it's a combination of home defense and adult Lego. Something for me to play around with as a hobby. And I'm not going to be doing long range precision shooting. Uh, mostly it's going to be casual fun at the range or out on a friend's property or what have you. Um, I don't really plan on engaging in competition shooting with it because um, that gets expensive pretty quick. So a $500 LPVO is actually more scope than I need. You see, um, sad to admit it, but in, when it comes to scopes, I am two things that gun social media hates. I'm a casual and a poor. There you have it. Um, aside from a couple of specialized scopes that were used by our military during the dark ages, um, my my use of and acquaintance with scopes has been, this rifle has a scope. I sighted it in and it hits where I want it to at the ranges I intend to shoot. And that was good enough. It didn't have to be fancy. It didn't have to have an elite feature set. It didn't have to have an expensive price tag. Usually it was the scope that came on the rifle. And that was fine because it did the job. And that's what I need. I need a scope that's going to do the job. Now, this seems like a pretty nice scope. 
and $500 puts it in kind of a medium price bracket. Most LPVOs run between, you know, under a hundred to a thousand dollars. Yes, you can spend more money than that. Uh, you can spend quite a bit more money than that. So here's the thing. Is a $90 Monstrum or this $500 Arkan as good as those expensive scopes? It's, it's, it's really not. And yet, it kind of is. The thing is, I'm 60 years old. I wear these, which are constantly getting dirty, scratched up, whatever. Um, do I need ultimate optical clarity? I probably can't tell the difference between good enough optical clarity and elite ultimate optical clarity. It's a function of my age, my eyes, my glasses. So there's very little benefit to me in spending tons and tons of money on a scope, even if I had tons and tons of money to spend on a scope, which I don't. Um, but I wanted to try out the concept. Roy was nice enough to loan me this so that I could, and I like it. Um, as I suspected, this is just the sort of scope that I need and can genuinely use. It's, uh, it's not excessively high powered. It's not extreme ultimate precision, but it's going to do anything I'm likely or even potentially likely to use a, a rifle scope for on my AR-15. Um, doing a lot of research on this, watched a lot of videos, watched a lot of discussions, um, Forgotten Weapons just had an excellent discussion with someone who is an expert on optics and LPVOs, and, uh, and you should watch it, um, because it's very good. But it brought home to me something and was able to articulate, because he's an expert, that I had felt. Somewhere around $500, you hit the wall of diminishing returns. The more expensive scopes are better, quantifiably better. But every increment increase in price brings only a tiny improvement in quality. The difference between this scope and a $2,500 LP, LV, LPVO, Sorry, rented lips. Um, it's real. It's quantifiable. And you have to be really, really good and shooting a lot for that difference to be a difference. The difference is real, but for most of us, it's not relevant. And, you know, for a casual rifle shooter like me, who's using the rifle, you know, maybe a few hundred rounds a year, a $200 LPV, LPVO is pretty much going to be indistinguishable from a $2,000 LPVO. I'm just not skilled enough or demanding enough for the differences that that difference in price creates to matter. And there it is. Now, as somebody who's a comp competition two or three gun shooter, who's shooting a thousand rounds or more a month easily, that difference in quality makes a difference. Because if I buy a $200 I don't know, Monstrum um, LPV, L, LPVO or a $100 Monstrum LPVO. It's going to do what I want it to. And I'm never going to tax it enough to find out why it's so cheap. <laughs> <laughs> B 
because I'm just not that good or using it hard enough. And so I'm not going to say the $2,500 optic isn't worth it. If your use case is very demanding, it's absolutely worth it. You know, do your research, look it up, make sure it's got a good track record and all that stuff, yada, yada. There are expensive products that do not have good track records. But for most of us, for me, for us casuals and poors, it's probably fine. A viewer and a friend from online has offered up a Swamp Fox, which I will be very happy to take advantage of and use. And I will do a full review of that because I'll have it long enough. <laughs> and I'll probably put a meaningful number of rounds through it in rifle range and outdoor conditions to be able to give you some kind of useful opinion on it. Uh, this is not a review of this Arkin scope because the purpose of the Arkin scope was for me to see if an LPVO was right for me. And I think it is because it did the stuff I want it to do. Now I haven't headed out to a proper rifle range. I zeroed it at around 25 yards. And from a, from a casual rest, it shot one whole groups at that range and did it consistently. I don't know what more I could legitimately have found out under those circumstances. And I, using it at one power with the illuminated reticle as a faux red dot, uh, and just blasting away at the target, um, it worked good. It seems to indicate that it is the proper sort of scope for part of my use case, which would be home defense. Again, I don't expect to ever need an AR-15 or any firearm for home defense. But if I do, I want to make sure it's a good one for the purpose. And that includes a good optic, and this seems to be the right type of optic. Um, my feelings about the Arkan optic, I like it. It seems really good. Optical clarity is great. The reticle, the range of illumination, everything seems really good. It does have features that I would never use, like two settings for night vision. And that's okay, I'd rather have more than less. Anyway, that in my somewhat rambling way is my way of just saying LPVO. Yes, for this rifle, that is the scope for me. And, um, and that spending an excessive amount of money on one for my uses, my abilities, and my limitations would be kind of pointless. Um, Anyway, just my thoughts about L LPVOs in general and my specific uses and what is actually useful to me. So, that's it. Shout out to my supporters on Patreon. Your contributions help more than you know. Also to channel benefactors like Roy and Leah and any number of individuals and businesses that have been extremely helpful and helped make this channel work. So thank you all. There's a link in the description below to AmmoSquared.com. It's a ammunition subscription service that I and other YouTubers use. And uh, I like it. And if you follow the link and decide it's for you and sign up, I get a little bit of extra ammo in my account, which helps the channel. So Hope this finds you well, stay safe, take care, and we'll talk to you again real soon.